globalist organizations that have been established? Well, the, the largest, of course, would be the United Nations. And a lot of other globalist organizations that we know of that exist, the International Monetary Fund and the World Bank and all these, they're all subsidiaries of the United Nations. Uh, what is their purpose? Their purpose is to take control of the planet. Uh, the United Nations was formed in 1945. And it was formed at a time when uh, World War II hadn't yet ended. And a lot of people, uh, my own parents involved, uh, remembered World War I. And they were sold the idea of, we've got to have something new. We've got to do something different to avoid another one of these terrible wars. And that's how the United Nations was sold. And it was sold that way to the senators who voted for it. The Senate of the United States was given the uh, role of deciding whether or not we would approve the Charter of the United Nations, and the uh, vote in the Senate was 89 to 2. Just two senators voted against it. Henrik Shipstead of Minnesota and William Langer of North Dakota. Right? Two very well-known names. No. <laughs> but uh, so the United Nations was started. Uh, I lament the fact that many people in our country have not ever read the Constitution of the United States. But far fewer people have ever read the Charter of the United Nations. <laughs> There's a small little part of the United Nations, this being the globalist organization, right? And, and all of these other globalist type organizations that you hear about, so they're all subsidiaries of the UN. Right? Article 25 of the Charter of the United Nations, very small, one sentence. It says, all members of the United Nations agree to accept and carry out the decisions of the Security Council. That trumps the Constitution. As a member of the United Nations, therefore, the United States has agreed that we will accept the decisions of the Security Council of the United Nations. Forget the Constitution. The United Nations is now running. I mean, when did that start? When did we start doing that? Well, we went to war in Korea. We went to war in Korea, and the war in Korea was fought on the United Nations. The United Nations flags were flying, right? And, and even our military people didn't understand what, what was happening here. And we still have 30,000 troops in South Korea because the United Nations is dictating that we do so. Incredible. So globalist organizations, no thanks. John Birch Society has long been known for the organizations say, get us out of the United Nations and get the United Nations out of the United States. We very much still want to see that happen. There has been some votes in the uh, Congress about getting out of the United Nations. Uh, uh, there's a bill that gets put in every year, <clears throat> every two years to withdraw United States recognition of the United Nations and so forth. And uh, the number of congressmen who vote for it seem to be rising, but it's kind of a back burner issue with a lot of people. You know, we got a lot of other things to worry about. Let's not worry about the United Nations. So, well, why not worry about the United Nations, right? There's a subsidiary of the United Nations called NATO, North Atlantic Treaty Organization, under which we are fighting the war in Afghanistan. And the head of that war in Afghanistan is a Belgian, not an American. Should we not be concerned about that? Why is it that we're almost 10 years now at war in Afghanistan? And they said we're going to get out in, in the summer of 2011, but they have just recently come out and said, no, no, we'll be here at least until 2014. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. How did we get into Iraq? Well, we got into Iraq because of a United Nations resolution. I could actually produce a piece of paper that signed by our ambassador to the United Nations, citing Security Council number such and such and number such and such as authorization for us to invade Afghan uh, Iraq. This is ridiculous, right? I think the United States should mind its own business. I think the United States should get out of these globalist organizations. I think the United States should say to other nations, look, 
we've built a pretty good deal here. We've got a pretty good thing going in this United States of America. Why don't you adopt what we've done, right? Here's a copy of our Constitution. Take it. Use it, right? And, and we'll get back to using it more ourselves while you're doing that as well. Uh, nationhood is a good thing. Where did nationhood start? Well, even people who don't know much about the Bible know that there was a place called the Tower of Babel. Okay? In the Tower of Babel, you can read about it in the Old Testament. You can read about the people who were building a tower. They were going to reach up to God. They were going to be uh, alternatives to God. Right? And God said, no, you're not going to do that. And so God confused the tongues of the people. And so people who formerly could talk to each other, were, the, the, their languages were no longer compatible. Right? So the people who could talk to each other went off here and formed this nation, and some of them went off here and formed that nation, and some someplace else and formed another. The beginning of nationhood. Nationhood is a good thing. Nationhood was started by God Almighty if you believe the Bible, and I do. Right? So nationhood is a good thing. To have all nations then give up their sovereignty, give up their independence, and become part of a world globalist system under the United Nations, no thank you. No thank you. But look further into the United Nations. And who was the secretary general of the founding meeting? He was a man named Alger Hiss. He was later found out to be a secret communist. Right? The charter of the UN was written by Hiss and by Gromyko from the Soviet Union. Uh, the United Nations uh, was, uh, there were, I think, 17 or 18 different individuals in the U.S. State Department who were uh, very key in putting together the United States attitude toward the Soviet, toward the, uh, the United Nations. And all 17 of them were found out later to be secret communists, right? Not by Joe McCarthy, <laughs> before Joe McCarthy, uh, and, and so on. So the United Nations, it's, it's a total disaster. We should get out of it. And uh, if we got out of the United Nations, the United Nations would, would go the way of the League of Nations, which existed for a time. And because the U.S. didn't get involved in it, went out of business. So globalism, no thank you. Uh, independence, yes.